So you want to make a mobile robot. You want a robot that moves and you want it to do something cool. So sometimes the way a robot moves can be something cool. I think of like a hexapod. It's got six legs moving. It looks pretty awesome. So if you're making a hexapod, it makes sense to spend the majority of your time designing that locomotion system. Not only because it's going to require a lot of time, but because kind of the locomotion is itself the goal of the robot. But if you need a mobile robot that does something else, like say navigates through your hallways to get your root beer from the fridge, then you might be better off spending your time developing the means for that navigation and its ability to say manipulate the fridge door. So what I'm getting at here is that you have to ask yourself where you want to invest the majority of your time when you're designing a robot. Because building a mobile platform from scratch is going to take you some time. Even if it's a simple four-wheeled robot, if you're going to design it and build it yourself, you can expect to put some time into that. Now, I mean, if your goal is to have a solid understanding of how to build a robot chassis, then that makes a whole lot of sense to do it yourself. But if you just want to get your machine up and running, you might also consider outsourcing the creation of that mobile platform. So, simply put, you just buy an off-the-shelf, easy-to-assemble, already proven mobile platform, and then you use that as the base to design your mobile robot. So in this video, I'm going to do a brief review of one of these mobile platforms, the DF Robot Pirate. It's a four-wheel drive mobile platform that is built specifically to be used with Arduino or Arduino compatible microcontrollers. Now if you've been messing around with Arduino for a while, you've probably seen the Pirate for sale somewhere. And the fact that it's, I just see it everywhere is part of the reason I'm doing this review, just to give you an idea of what you might be getting your, yourself into if you get it, the, the ups and the downs. In future tutorials, I'll show you some caveats to actually building one and also some things we can make it do relatively easily. So let's first talk price because I know that can be a base for a lot of decisions. So depending on where you purchase the Pirate, I've seen it ranging from as low as $40 and up to about $60. Now there is an inverse relationship between the price you see it available for and its shipping cost. So I actually ended up buying mine from Jamico because even though it cost more, the shipping was less and then that made it cheaper on the whole. So I mean all this of course depends on where you live. I'm in the US so for me Jamico is a good option. Now. You're also going to need an Arduino and a motor driver shield to make this thing actually move around. So you can get these for about $50 US total. And so overall for this platform to make the thing move, you're looking at about $100 US plus or minus about 10 bucks. So if you do some shopping around looking at different mobile platforms, to me it seemed like it was a pretty reasonable price to get a metal chassis robot. Now that might just be my naive spell self speaking because I haven't messed around with too many mobile platforms, but in my opinion, it seems like a reasonable price point. Now, like I did say, it does have a metal chassis, and when you assemble everything together, it's all pretty stinking solid. And you can tell the, the parts have been machined relatively well, so it was pretty easy to put together. Now, the wheel motors that they sell with this aren't impressive by any means, but they do work just fine. And the tires, they're made of rubber, but they're really nothing to call home about. It even says in the package, this is more for like a robot you'll use indoors or on a flat road surface. So from a durability perspective, I would say yes, the robot's definitely durable, but it's not going to be something that's going to be like driving over piles of dirt and stuff like that. I just don't think it could handle that. Now, it's not the fastest robot either. Its highest speed is 61 centimeters per second, which works out to 2.2 kilometers per hour or 1.4 miles per hour, which, you know, I mean your two-year-old kid could probably run it down and smash it. But if you're using something indoors, that's actually a pretty good pace for the thing to be moving. Now, like I said earlier, the machine was pretty simple to get put together, mechanically speaking. I mean, the directions are really easy to follow. They're actually very nicely done, except for the fact that they make no mention whatsoever of the steps necessary to wire up the motors or where and how to mount the Arduino board and the motor controller. Now the kit includes the wires and the mounting hardware for the Arduino and for the motors, it just leaves out how to use them. So this was pretty annoying to be honest, in, in my opinion. So I had to backtrack a couple times when I was building it, and I realized that they weren't going to provide any of those instructions. I just had to Google around and kind of figure it out. So other than that, it was a cinch to put together, and generally speaking, I was pleased with the manual. So if you pick up the robot and you shake it a little bit, 
it's pretty sturdy when all is said and done once you've tightened all the screws up and you can get it together in probably uh, under an hour and a half if you're not trying to film everything so that you can make a tutorial about it. Now the top plate has a ton of holes in it where you can connect sensors. It also has like a sensor platform that comes out where you can attach sensors to it. It also comes with three ultrasonic distance sensor mounting hardware. So you don't actually get the sensor but you get the mounting hardware for one of the uh, ultrasonic distance sensors. So that's kind of nice to have those. To power the robot you can use five AA batteries and actually comes with a battery pack. And there's also a jack they provide that you can use to use some type of external power to power it. Now the way I'm currently using it is I use the five AA batteries to power the motor controller and essentially power the wheel motors and then I use a separate 9 volt battery to power the Arduino. But I'm pretty sure I can power them all with the five AA batteries and I'll experiment with that and I'll, I'll uh, update you in a different video on how that works out. But generally speaking, overall, for the price point, you get a pretty sturdy robot. If you're looking to make something that's going to be indoors or on a flat surface outside, I think it's a reasonable purchase. So hey, there's my review of the DF Robot Pirate. I'd love to hear your comments, any feedback, and any experience you've personally had with the Pirate. And like I said before in future videos, I'm going to go into actually assembling this thing, some caveats with the assembly, and we'll also make it do some uh, neat things. All right, take it easy, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye. La 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 la